Hello everyone, how are you doing up there? My name is Mark Anton Audio. Today we're going to be talking about this, the BFC 2000. This is going to be the first of a two-part series. The first, uh, first episode I'm going to talk about the BFC 2000 and its features in Pro Tools, which is where the environment that I use it in. And the next video I'm going to give a review of it and my thoughts on the actual device itself. So without hesitation, let's get started. So what is the BFC 2000? So this is a control surface from Behringer, which they released uh, a wee while ago, a few, a few years ago now. Uh, it's basically it's one of the most affordable control surfaces on the market. That's basically its, its mass appeal. Um, and it has, it's basically no fancy features. It's just the USB or a MIDI cable plugged into it. And that's going to be the majority of your control. It doesn't have any XLR inputs, doesn't have any mic gains um, or, or, or preamps or blindings, anything like that. Uh, so it's a very simple device for helping you to control your software. So for example, if uh, I move my faders here, you can see that uh, they are replicated. Those movements are replicated in the software. Uh, so this is basically the main crux. It is, it is eight faders or eight channels worth, but you can press these buttons here to set, uh, skip forward in banks of eight. So if I press this button here, I'm now controlling the next eight channels again the next eight channels and whatnot. So you have like theoretically an unlimited number of, of faders that you can control. Uh, there are also uh, some other, quite a lot of other functions. I'm going to take you through as many of them as I can, or at least the ones that I use. Uh, by pressing this button here, I can basically set these rotary controls at the top to control my pans. So you can see uh, as I turn these, I'm changing pans. Very handy, very good. Um, these four buttons at the top here, what they do is they allow me to change the function of these rotary controls to control uh, any sends I have set up. So for example, if I press the first one, it is send A. And here, you can see now that if I, I have some, some reverb channels set up, and I can now change the, the send going to each of these, uh, going along each of these buses. Now if I hit and the next button on here, I cycle to uh, my next set of uh, my next set of buses, and you can see and these, so I can control four sends very easily just by switching between those. So if you use lots of uh, like delay effects, reverb effects, or if you're setting up headphone mixes, this is a great way to to cycle between them. Uh, and of course, you have on the actual rotary control itself, uh, you have the the visual representation, so you can see there that the LEDs light up around the rotary control to signify like how on or off it is for lack of a better term or the, the amount going to that channel. Uh, very useful. Um, so you might be asking, hey you've got pan control, which we'll slip back on here, uh, but how do you control stereo pans? So you can see here uh, that these pan controls are now only controlling the left channel. So if you hit the pan button again, it now switches so it can control the right channel. So if I want this track here to be panned totally to the left, pan that one left, and then pan it fully left. Lovely. Uh, underneath here, I have some solo and mute buttons. So I can hit solo and mutes. Uh, very useful. Uh, I use those all the time. Uh, what I can also do is, on my actual keyboard itself, if I, like and normally in Pro Tools, if you hold Alt and click on something, usually applies it to all the things, so if I hold Alt and click on Solo there, or Alt and Mute, uh, I can replicate that as well, but if I hold Alt key and then press the actual button on the keyboard itself. Very cool. Um, other cool thing, these rotary controllers actually double its buttons, so if you click them in, they activate the core mode. That's another super useful thing, I really like that. Uh, I hate having to manually click on individual record tracks. It's much harder, much easier to have them in front of me. And again, if I hold the Alt key, I can apply that to all, all tracks or no tracks. Uh, very cool. Uh, right, what else do we have? Uh, so these, this button here, uh, well, I, I've got tape on them to kind of uh, to write down the controls because the, there's there's no real indication what the buttons are. So uh, go through the manual and kind of make little tape notes for yourself. This button is a, a shift key and basically changes the function of various buttons on here. So if I hold the shift key and go back up to our top four buttons, I can now switch between the mix and edit window, easy and easily, and then the ones underneath, transport and memory locations, 
Very cool, I like that a lot. Um, the shortcut for, for switching between the mix and edit window on the keyboard, on PC at least, is a control then plus. It is like the least ergonomic shortcut ever, that's the hand shape you make. Uh, but it's, it's much more ergonomic to, to, to perform it like this, much, much less stressful on the hand uh, than this horrible Crab Maga hand shape over here. Uh, okay, what else have we got? Um, we have an undo button here. Uh, I never ever use this. Uh, I'm so used to doing Control Z or Apple Z that I never bother using that to be honest. Uh, we have a record button here. Uh, so it can, can activate record mode. So if you know, the transport, you can see that I can turn it on and off record. Go to the edit window. Uh, I can then go press it. Uh, I can play stop and play down here. Go to record mode. Click a few channels into record. Hit play. And now we're recording. And it's stopping. Very cool. Uh, if I hold shift and hit record, uh, I can activate quick punch mode. Uh, so, I start recording. And I can activate and deactivate punch mode in real time. Very cool. Um, what else? Okay, uh, so yeah, so the bottom keys stop and play. If I hold the shift key and press stop and play, basically what it does is it skips between the beginning and end of the song. So obviously our song here is only about seven seconds long of blank audio. Um, but if you look at the transport, you can see that I'm skipping forward five bars there and then going back to zero. It's very good if you're working in very long sessions or do kind of post-production or even just in general. It's always very useful to have that. Okay, down here we also have a buttons we can hold to scroll back and forth through the audio. Anyway, so that's the, the rough overall, overall functionality of the PCF2000. Um, I, I shall put a link to the, the next video where I'll actually give my review of the device itself. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Mark Anton Audio says, adios.